Good evening. This is Straight Talk with Eugene Chan. Our guest this evening is Mr. Granville Cross, a senior counsel and professor of law. Mr. Cross was the first director of public prosecutions to be appointed after Hong Kong was returned to our motherland and was also the longest serving DPP holding this post for 12 years. He is a career prosecutor and is a senator for life of the International Association of Prosecutors. With that standing, he is most suitably qualified to talk to us about the rule of law in Hong Kong and whether it is under attack. Welcome, Granville. Thank you very much, Eugene. So, Granville, could we start by telling the viewers briefly about the rule of law of Hong Kong and why it is so important to all of us? Well, the, uh, our legal system has been absolutely fundamental to our success uh, since 1997. The, it underpins the, the rule of law. Uh, it ensures that uh, people who are accused in criminal trials of offences have fair trials. It ensures that uh, people who go to court on whatever types of cases receive due process and uh, fair hearings. Uh, and it provides uh, a level playing field for the business and, uh, and uh, commercial worlds. Uh, it's also uh, overseen by a highly professional judiciary, uh, which is trusted by local people and by uh, uh, international businesses. Uh, and it also provides uh, a fair system of arbitration uh, for people who want to do business uh, in the mainland. Right. So for all these types of reasons, uh, it's absolutely essential. Right. Has the rule of law in Hong Kong ever been previously, I would say, weakened or to use the word tarnished? Well, there have been uh, attacks on the rule of law in Hong Kong from time to time. Uh, in, more, in very recent times, we have seen, uh, post uh, uh, the enactment of the national security law in 2020, that uh, attempts have been made to undermine our judiciary uh, and our prosecutors. Uh, and this has been done for a very clear reason, mm -hmm. that because the legal system is so important for Hong Kong, uh, if the legal system can be undermined or weakened, then this will not only harm Hong Kong, it will also hurt China itself. So people who are trying to harm our legal system have an ulterior motive, that they want to undermine Hong Kong's importance to China uh, and thereby to damage uh, China as, as well. So right. this is obviously very concerning. Yes. Remember, uh, the World Justice Project's Rule of Law Index ranks Hong Kong 23rd globally out of 142, ahead of even of the United States and even some of the European countries. So can you s discuss briefly specific contributions from the judiciary, our prosecution service and the wider legal pro profession that lead to this high ranking? Well, as I say, the, uh, Hong Kong is blessed to have a, a highly professional judiciary. Uh, it, uh, in the Court of Final Appeal, for example, there are, uh, in addition to distinguished local judges, eminent jurists from other jurisdictions, uh, including from the United Kingdom, from uh, Canada uh, mm -hmm. and from Australia, some of them being former chief justices and presidents of the UK Supreme Court. And they ensure that the highest quality uh, legal system uh, is operated uh, in the interests of the people of Hong Kong. Uh, the uh, legal profession uh, is comprised of highly dedicated lawyers uh, and they provide excellent services in, in both the public uh, and the private sectors. Uh, and because we do have these arrangements in place, it has ensured that the one country, two systems uh, paradigm has been successful uh, and that the capitalist system and the way of life of Hong Kong people uh, has endured. Mm -hmm. So we are extremely fortunate and this is recognised by international observers as you say, the World Justice Project ranked Hong Kong only last month as 23rd mm -hmm. out of 142 jurisdictions surveyed. Uh, and this was, as you say, ahead of the United States, ahead of many European countries, including, for example, Italy, which was 32nd, uh, Poland, which was 36th, uh, and uh, Greece, which was 47th. So we are uh, very highly regarded uh, by objective observers of rule of law situations. Uh, and uh, this gives the lie to the many critics who, who love to give the impression that our legal system is on its last legs. Right, Grenville, just a personal question. If, say, we haven't got the Western rhetoric of trying to smear Hong Kong, as somebody claims, mm. do you think we will be even higher than 23rd? Uh, not necessarily, uh, because uh, the... Uh, the uh, people who compile the, the, the Rule of Law Index in the World Justice Project are, are wholly objective observers. They rely on uh, independent uh, data 
which is, uh, which is obtained from the 142 jurisdictions, uh, and they don't allow themselves to be pushed around or otherwise influenced uh, by uh, propaganda from particular countries. Right. So their, their assessments are objective, uh, and this is probably a fairly, uh, fairly just rating. Do you see us moving up further in the future? Uh, well, I would certainly hope so. Uh, uh, Hong Kong, as I say, is very highly regarded. Uh, in addition to its high ranking overall, it ranked sixth uh, out of 15 in the Asia-Pacific region, which again is very high. Uh, and there's absolutely no reason at all why, uh, as things settle down and Hong Kong continues to expand mm -hmm. its operations uh, in finance, uh, in arbitration and so on, that its uh, situation should not improve. Mm -hmm. Just now you mentioned that of the president of overseas judges. Certainly, I'm sure it will lead to us a lot of credibility and professionalism of the Hong Kong legal system. Would you agree? Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, as I say, we do have uh, highly regarded judges from other jurisdictions. They bring great expertise to bear for our court of final appeal. And I know that the local judges as well find their input to be, to be of great value. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, these people have come under pressure to resign from the court of final appeal. Uh, uh, Two of them actually did resign last year. They were serving judges who came under great pressure from the British government to resign. But the other judges are retired judges uh, and they have not allowed themselves to be pushed around. Mm -hmm. uh, and they have made the point time and time again that the Hong Kong system works well uh, and that if the criticisms which are levelled against it uh, by uh, various uh, powers, particularly in the United States, the United Kingdom, were true, mm -hmm. then they themselves would resign from the Court of Final Appeal. But as they know they're not true, they have held their ground and refused to be pushed around in the best tradition of, uh, of, of, the, of, of judges. Right. Um, Grenville, if the recent call of a appeal decision to quash the convictions of pro-democracy activists highlights the judicial robustness, can you explain to the viewers why they, have, why they are still facing criticism over the handling of national security and protest-related cases? Well, of course, uh, there was a, a lot of support in foreign parts for the protest movement uh, in 2019-2020. Uh, in uh, and that support continued even when it turned violent and huge damage was done to Hong Kong. Although the national security law has returned uh, normality to Hong Kong and restored its uh, equilibrium, the people who were behind the riots and the damage, the criminal damage and so on, uh, are now facing the consequences. Uh, but the foreign powers are still giving them some support. Uh, and they are demonizing the national security law, uh, even though they themselves, in many cases, have national security laws of their own, which are, which are far tougher than mm. anything that, that Hong Kong has. Right. Uh, and so it's being used as a stick with which, which to beat Hong Kong. Uh, and. Uh, the fact that we do have an independent judiciary, the fact that we remain a common law system is ensure that our legal arrangements are fairly applied even under the new national security law arrangements. Right, Grenville, we have heard about this bill this week that a group of US lawmakers introduced calling on the US government to impose sanctions on 49 Hong Kong judges yeah. and legal professionals. So what grounds do they have that for the sanctioning? Well, this is absolutely extraordinary, but it's all part of the process to undermine Hong Kong. Uh, in, the, in the US, there is a group known as the Congressional Executive Commission on China, mm -hmm. which is uh, comprised of uh, China uh, bashers. Uh, and they, are all, they do all they can to try and undermine Hong, uh, China uh, and to harm Hong Kong. Uh, last year, they called for sanctions on Hong Kong prosecutors, for 15 prosecutors. In May, they asked President Joe Biden to impose sanctions on uh, Hong Kong judges uh, involved in national security law cases. Earlier this year, the same group even called uh, on President Biden to close down Hong Kong's three trade, economic and trade offices in the United States. So they're doing everything they can to try and harm Hong Kong. And as you say, the, the, the latest initiative uh, is, a, is by a group of uh, 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 Congress people uh, supported by the Congressional Executive Committee on China, who are now trying to intimidate our judges, our prosecutors uh, and our officials uh, with these sanctions, which is absolutely appalling uh, and spits in the face of, of the, the rule of law. Uh, and indeed, what is uh, particularly disgusting is that these are the same people who claim to support the international rules-based order. Uh, and uh, here they are trying to intimidate and threaten Hong Kong judges, prosecutors and officials right. for only doing their job and for upholding the rule of law and bringing criminals to account, which is despicable. Right. Before the break, I want to ask you a direct question. Is this an attack on the, or, of our rule of law? It absolutely is. Uh, if, uh, if judges are, feel threatened or if prosecutors feel threatened or if the legal profession feels threatened, then obviously it will create a climate of fear uh, in Hong Kong uh, and that cannot be good for the rule of law. 
Right, Granville. So what you're saying that this sanction will affect our legal system, and it will induce a climate of fear amongst our judges, our, our legal professionals, our prosecutors. Would, would they call that? Would you call that manipulation and intimidation? Well, it's certainly intimidation. It's an attempt to uh, influence judges not to be true to their oath. I mean, they take judges when they're appointed, take an oath to uh, apply the law without fear or favour and to administer justice uh, impartially. This is an attempt to subvert their decisions and to push, to push them into taking decisions which may not be justified uh, on the facts of the case and in light, in light of the law. And likewise with prosecutors, an attempt to intimidate them not, not, to, do, not to do their job. Uh, and as Hong Kong is... A, a major common law system, uh, and as, as it is ranked 23rd in rule of law terms by the World Justice uh, Project, uh, people need have no concerns right. that the law is being applied fairly and impartially to everybody. Right, so Grenville's actually, you can say, they actually deter them from exercising an independent and unbiased judgment because of the fear of being sanctioned. Would you say that's true? Well, that is... Uh, of course, it's only a proposal at this stage, it's only a bill, and hopefully it will never see the light of day. But clearly the intention is to intimidate legal people in right. Hong Kong uh, into not doing their duty and not fulfilling, fulfilling their responsibilities. All right, Grenfell, let's take a break now. We will stay tuned. We will be right back. Thank you for staying with us. And we have Mr. Grenville Cross on the show this evening, talking to us about the rule of law in Hong Kong, whether it is under attack. So, Granville, in the first part, you have categorically said that we are under attack should this proposal become a reality. And there's also been suggested under Article 55 of the National Security Legislation that some NSL cases might have to be transferred to the mainland if the sanctions are imposed. Could this happen? I mean, is this an overstatement? Uh, theoretically, it could happen. Uh, the if there's an involvement of uh, external factors or foreign forces in a particular case, then this can be a possible basis for transferring a case to, uh, to, uh, the, to uh, the mainland for, for trial. But equally, under the, under the national security law, uh, jurisdiction over national security cases is vested in the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region. Uh, and uh, I imagine that that uh, will be uh, observed, uh, except uh, unless wholly exceptional circumstances arise. Obviously, I don't have a, a crystal ball, but uh, from my understanding of the situation, uh, there is no sufficient basis at present to transfer a case out of Hong Kong. Right, Grenville. Just now, you mentioned that there's a lot of the bill's motivation has been described as an attempt to weaken China by harming Hong Kong's legal system. So, just explain to that connection. I mean, how much evidence do we have on that? Well, I mean, obviously, uh, Hong Kong is very important to China. It is a centre for legal services. As is often said, it is a bridge between China uh, and the West. Uh, many Western countries uh, have their businesses in Hong Kong. Their commercial enterprises are here doing business with China. Uh, when disputes, for example, arise over uh, commercial enterprises in the mainland, provision is made for uh, arbitration here in Hong Kong. Uh, and so Hong Kong is immensely important to China in various ways. Uh, and, of course, uh, it's a centre for the transfer of capital uh, in and out, of, in and out of, uh, of China. So, in all sorts of ways, uh, uh, Hong Kong plays a vital role in China's development. Uh, and, clearly, if Hong Kong could be harmed, uh, as some people want to do, particularly its legal system, which is at the centre of things, then this will uh, undermine China. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, uh, people must understand that when people talk about these sanctions in the United States, uh, their true aim is to try to hurt China, uh, and they're not, they're not seriously concerned uh, about other, other matters. Right. Do you believe the international community fully understands the complexity of Hong Kong's situation, especially in the context of the proposed bill by the US lawmakers? Well, I certainly hope they do. Uh, so far as I can tell, uh, the, uh, no other countries have come out in support of what the United States uh, congressmen have proposed. There's been no support for it in... Canada, in the United Kingdom, in Australia, uh, New Zealand, the other Five Eyes partners. Uh, I, uh, in September, the British Foreign Secretary, uh, James Cleverly, said that the Hong Kong courts remain independent. Uh, and I imagine, even though he might not like to come out and say it in, open, in the open, that he will be appalled by these threats to the, to the judges, because the common law system, as he well knows, and uh, other countries well know, uh, continues to operate fairly here. And you mentioned just now the, the quashing of the conviction of Jimmy Lai uh, and other uh, people for having taken part in an unauthorised assembly uh, in, uh, in 2019. They're actually convicted of organising organizing the unauthorised assembly uh, by the district court. Uh, and their appeal succeeded 
uh, in August of this year, and the convictions were quashed by the Court of Appeal, mm -hmm. which is a vivid testament to the fact exactly. that we do have an independent judiciary uh, adjudicating fairly uh, upon the issues of the day. Right. Uh, and most uh, balanced observers can see that, and it's a pity that some people in the US Congress, for their own political reasons, cannot. Right. Granville is reassuring that other countries do have the, the sense of being uh, well, they have the justice, decency. decency. They have some sense of decency. Right. Yeah. But we have been having strong condemn condemnations mm. of the proposed sanctions by our chief executive, mm. our secretary of justice, mm. the Hong Kong and Macau affairs office, mm. as well as the commissioner of police. Do you think the U.S. government would take any notice? And how, how do you think they will, they will respond? Well, of course, at the end of the day, it will be down to uh, President Joe Biden. Uh, and I'm sure that uh, anything that's said in Hong Kong will be taken uh, into, into account. Uh, if the higher echelons of the United States government clearly understand the way in which our legal system operates, how we do have fair and independent courts, then I'm sure this will be taken on board. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure in the United Kingdom as well that there will be concern that some of the judges who've been threatened with sanctions by this group of congressmen are actually British nationals which is incredible. And I would hope that at some point the British Foreign Secretary, James Cleverley, will spring to their defence. Right. So far as I know, he said nothing so far. Perhaps he said something behind the scenes. But uh, I would certainly hope that he would uh, stand up for not only Hong Kong judges, but also for the, for the uh, British uh, nationals uh, who, who, have been, who have been threatened. Uh, but remember, at the end of the day, that it is down to President Joe Biden. Last year, when the Congressional Executive Commission on China sought sanctions on prosecutors, uh, President Biden didn't heed their call. Mm -hmm. In May, when uh, they, they sought sanctions against uh, Hong Kong judges, he didn't heed their call. Mm -hmm. And I would certainly hope that uh, this time he would likewise disregard their call uh, because it is so irresponsible uh, and so offensive to the rule of law, not only in, in Hong Kong, but everywhere. So in your view, what is the best way to, to defend our rule of law? Uh, to continue to get the message across uh, that uh, Hong Kong has a first-class legal system, that it has a, uh, a, a judiciary which is uh, second to none in the Asia-Pacific region, that people can get, who are charged with criminal offences receive fair trials here, uh, and generally to get, to, to get the message out. Uh, and we've seen that uh, objective observers, such as the World Justice Project, once they do actually analyse the situation, realise how well Hong Kong is doing. Yes. Uh, and this message must be projected as much as possible uh, around the world. Right, just go back to that the bill. The sponsor of the bill said that the aim is to hold Hong Kong officials accountable for human rights violations. Yeah. So where do they get this idea of any officials have done that? Well, of course, there are uh, highly vocal uh, lobby groups in the uh, in, uh, United States, uh, which include people who've been convicted of criminal offences in Hong Kong. Uh, and uh, they are given uh, access to, uh, to uh, congressmen, uh, and they are highly vocal, uh, maligning Hong Kong and presenting a false picture uh, of, of the, the situation here. Uh, so it's very important that we do continue our efforts to make sure that people understand the position uh, and that uh, the uh, propaganda does not prevail. All right. Just now you mentioned the trial of Jimmy Lai. Of course, we are not going to talk about the details of the trial. We just mentioned yeah. what has happened in, in, the, in, the, in the news. The, this, the trial of Jimmy Lai does attract a lot of attention and criticism from the international community, which is a fact. Yeah. And I read that a group of Catholic uh, cardinals or, or bishops actually recently launched a joint petition calling on our SAR government to immediately and unconditionally release Jimmy Lai, who is a Catholic himself. What is your comment on that? Well, this is quite a big question, Eugene. Yes. Uh, in fact, Jimmy Lai has two legal teams, one in Hong Kong uh, and a so-called international legal team, which is based in London and which comprises a group of lawyers there. The legal team in Hong Kong has made clear it has nothing to do with the legal team in London. <laughs> that legal team in London has been going around the world smearing Hong Kong and smearing Hong Kong's legal system. And it appears, from what I understand, that they have had a hand in uh, recruiting these 10 clerics into issuing this statement on Hong Kong. And from what the clerics have said, it's absolutely clear to me that they haven't been briefed correctly about the situation by this international legal team. For example, Mr Lai was convicted in December of last year of fraud and sentenced to five years, nine months imprisonment. So he is a convicted fraudster. 
So how the government can simply let him go, as the ten clerics are asking, uh, is, uh, is beyond belief. Mm -hmm. Those clerics, therefore, are living in crowd, cloud cuckoo land, uh, and they, they have fallen easy prey to the propagandists such as this international legal team. Uh, and it's clear that uh, the clerics were not properly briefed, that uh, Jimmy Lai will receive a fair trial, that he'll only be convicted if the prosecution uh, case has, pro has, has proved guilt beyond reasonable doubt. At his trial, the presumption of innocence will, uh, will apply. Uh, he will be entitled to lawyers to defend him. He will be entitled to all the traditional common law uh, protections which exist in criminal trials, not only in Hong Kong, but throughout the common law world. Uh, if at the end of the day he's convicted, he will have a right of appeal, and he may succeed, just as he succeeded in his appeal against the unauthorised, uh, uh, organising unauthorised assembly uh, conviction. So all the protections that are guaranteed by the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights will be available to Jimmy Lai in his forthcoming trial, and it's absolutely clear that the ten clerics were wholly unaware of that. Right. Grenville, with all the things you've mentioned in this show, why do you think still some of the international community have different perspectives on the rule of law and the implementation of the NSO in Hong Kong? Uh, well, there is a, de a, a definite attempt to demonise uh, the national security law. Uh, it's uh, all part of the ongoing movement, which is particularly strong in the United States, uh, but it also exists in the United Kingdom and elsewhere, to uh, put Hong Kong in a bad light. To, and uh, the best way of uh, weakening Hong Kong, of course, is to denigrate its legal system. Right. Uh, and that, as I've indicated already, will have a knock-on effect on, on China itself. So this needs to be put in its overall perspective of the uh, global rivalry that now exists between China and the United States, uh, and Hong Kong is, is caught in the crossfire. Right. Uh, objective observers realise that Hong Kong maintains a highly effective common law legal system, that the rule of law is intact, but the propagandists of the United States and elsewhere uh, try to diminish it for their own political reasons, namely to diminish China. Right, you just mentioned the, with the current climate of geopolitical tensions, this main campaign is against our city and the yeah. government doing all that they can do to refuel them effectively. Yeah. So how about indiv as individuals? I'm sure the viewer is going to ask you, what can we do to protect our city's reputation in short? Well, uh, many people in Hong Kong, of course, uh, have contacts elsewhere around the world. Hong Kong is an international city. Uh, people come and go. They have relatives living in, in other jurisdictions. And it's very important they take every opportunity they can to get a positive message out about Hong Kong because it's vital that people elsewhere understand how well our legal system is, work is working uh, and how Hong Kong uh, is uh, faring very well these days. Right, Greenville, I think there's all the time we have. And, and thank you very much for this important conversation. Hong Kong's reputation for the rule of law appears to be under threat and we must stand firmly on our principles as we know that justice will prevail. Allow me to share a quote from British philosopher John Locke. The end of law is not to abolish or restrain but to preserve and enlarge freedom. Have a good evening and see you next week.